this is what the president's budget does. It never balances. Uh, we voted on the president's budget last week, no, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago in the House. It didn't receive one vote. I, I was amazed. Nobody voted for it. <clears throat> Republicans, Democrats, nobody voted for the president's budget. And I think this is the reason, because people know that it's just going to be unsustainable. So in the House, we put forth a budget that gets us to balance, um, and, but it takes a few years. There was a, uh, I did support it, it did pass. There was another version, the blue line, that was put out a little more aggressive, and I supported that. It didn't have enough votes to pass, but it would have balanced in five years. So I think the sooner we get to balance budget and start paying off this debt, the better we are. But we're going to keep working on that. But the other way to balance budget is to get more people back to work, increase revenues. Uh, you know, I used to teach home economics and personal family finance, and some of you might of you know that. Uh, but I would teach my high school kids how to balance and say, okay, you know, your income, your expenses can't be more than your income. And they would get it. And I just don't see why Washington doesn't get it. Uh, they understand that. But if we talk about if you're running a little short, there's a couple things you can do. Uh, you can cut your expenses, quit running around town as much with their, your gas or whatever. Or you can pick up another job, get a second income and make a little more income. They got it. So that's where we are as a nation. We're out of balance, so we need to either cut our expenses or raise our income. Now, there's two ways to raise income, or more than two, or a combination, but a lot of, we're talking about this a lot in Washington, uh, some people think we need to raise taxes as the way to raise income. I don't support that. Uh, what I prefer is to try to get more people working. We've had over 36 months now of over 8% unemployment, and that means a lot of hurting people that are looking for work. Um, and that means there, there's not as much tax revenue coming in, plus there's more expenses. They're using more government services. One in seven Americans now is on food stamps. It's the most in our history as a country. I think that's tragic. That's unacceptable. So we need to do everything we can to help create jobs. Uh, there's two different ways of thinking on the creating jobs, too. One side prefers to borrow more money and have the government try to create jobs, through stimulus spending. Um, I don't think that's good. <laughs> it's not wise for us to indebt ourselves further. Plus, the government doesn't create jobs. It's the private sector that creates those long, sustaining jobs on the whole. So I talked to a lot of business owners and asked them in the 4th District, why aren't you hiring? What can you do to get more people back to work? And what they tell me is the reason they're not hiring is not that many of them don't have the capital. It's because of the uncertainty in the economic climate that they don't know. They say, Vicki, I don't know what my taxes are going to be next year. Of course, many of you know there's the largest tax increase in America's history that's due to go into effect January 1. So, and I don't know what my health care costs are going to be with the government take over of health care. The premiums are skyrocketing. So I don't know what regulations we're going to have because of all the different government agencies that are coming in and, and making demands and putting, you know, making our life miserable. I don't know if I'm going to be able to access credit because the Dodd-Frank bill is hurting our community banks. Uh, they said, so until all this is figured out, I'm not going to build a, a second store or open up a new location or expand or hire more workers. So what I'm trying to do is remove those barriers uh, oh, plus they don't know their energy costs. It's going to have that. That comes up a lot. So these are some examples of some of the bills we passed in the House to remove some of those barriers, whether it be to energy, whether it be to push back on some of the regulations, make sure they access capital. Uh, these are some of the ones that have passed. The frustrating thing is most of them, 28 of the 30 we passed, are just sitting in the Senate. And I have to admit that's been one of the most frustrating parts of what I've been trying to do for you guys is to get our economy going again. We do all these things and then they just sit and Harry Reid says we're not going to vote on it. So that's the reality of where we're at. But we're going to keep fighting, we're going to keep trying to, to get these things through because it's the right thing to do and we want to help people get back to work. I've been trying to do some practical things to get people back to work too. We had a business conference, small business conference in Morrisburg. 
had over 300 people come, and these were entrepreneurs and small business owners, and um, we had different panels on different topics like how to grow your business, how to market your business, how to, how to access uh, finance for your business, and it was, it was really positive. Then, uh, a few weeks ago, down in Lebanon, we had our first jobs fair. And I never had one before, but I, it was really uh, great. We had over 29 companies come in from around the south part of our district. They set up tables, and we invited job seekers to come in. And you may know people in Lebanon, but Laclede County, that area, has about 14% unemployment. Um, anyway, we had over 100 people come who were looking for work, and they went around and visited, and we checked with all the job uh, creators and companies and asked them, if you could hire today, if you had the right person here, how many people would you hire? And collectively, there was 223 jobs available, which that encouraged me, first of all, that there's that many companies that were wanting to hire and looking for good people. Um, anyway, long story short, later that day, at the end of the day, we found out that many people did get hired that day. So I was really happy about that, and I uh, hope we can continue to do more to help people find work. The last topic, hot topic, is gas prices. <laughs> that was Eric. Eric found that. I thought that was hilarious. It's, it's about the truth. Gas prices, it seems like it's an arm or leg of your first born. It's very expensive. Um, but what can we do? I want to do everything we can to, to get our gas prices down. They've just been going up and up and up. Of course, you know, you know, in January 2009, it was $1.89, and it's more than double. Uh, Missouri's current gas average is about three seventy four. dollars So that's, that's tough. That is tough. So what, what uh, goes into gas prices? What can we do? Well, you guys probably know it's a global market, um, and that complicates issues. Especially when you have Iran threatening to shut down the straight four moves over there, causing the uncertainty on the supply, uh, causing the prices to go up. But I think a lot of it is because we are so vulnerable ourselves that we're dependent on Middle Eastern oil. So when something happens over in the Middle East, you know, we're susceptible to having the prices go up because there's a threat of having our supply cut off. So I've been trying to promote using more of the energy that resources that America has been blessed with. We are the Saudi Arabia of the world in coal. Uh, it's clean, it's affordable, it's accessible. You guys can probably know that 85% of Missouri's electricity is generated from coal. So we you know, support coal here, we need to be using it. We are the, also the Saudi Arabia of the world in natural gas. It's clean, it's affordable, it's available, let's use it. And we have plenty of oil reserves in this country that we can, should tap into and should use. Uh, I have a friend yesterday who came uh, to church, had seen her a few years, they moved uh, several years ago, but her husband is building homes up in, on the Montana, North Dakota border. And she was telling me some firsthand stories that validated other stories I've heard about what's going on there. You guys heard about this? Up in North Dakota, it's like the, the gold rush day. She said, literally, it really, really is. People are living in tents. Uh, coming there to work from all over the country. They can't hardly find enough workers. Uh, the town that she's in has 10,000 people, or that he's in, 10,000 people. They expect in two years it to double to 20,000 people because they found a way to tap into the Balkan uh, oil reserve there and they're just pumping as much oil as they can. And there's other places in the country like that where we could be accessing that will create jobs that are needed Plus, it'll help us become more energy independent, so we're not so dependent on uh, foreign oil. So, um, the Keystone Pipeline uh, a project that I supported, we've been trying to encourage the president to come on board and support it. Uh, he hasn't yet, but it's 20,000 jobs, they say, most of them labor union jobs, created right there. So, we need to move forward with that. Uh, I supported all the above energy policy. Besides the things I mentioned, I think we should be doing more nuclear as well. But France is almost totally uh, energized through nuclear energy, and we could be doing that. But it takes about 15 years to build a new nuclear plant. So we need to move forward with the permits, make sure it's safe, but we could be doing that too, as well as renewables and, and other solutions. So let's become energy independent. I'm going to keep working towards that and promoting that idea because I think it makes sense. Oh, so that's my. Uh, 
a summary there of some of the hot topics that I know are probably on your mind. But I wanted to uh, open it up and see what's on your mind and hear your questions and your comments and uh, hear your wisdom that I can uh, take back with me. So, yes. Well, you had just talked about gas prices, and it seems like the uh, gas companies are making record profits, and, and Congress keeps giving them more and more tax breaks and subsidize. Uh, what is the big oil companies um, give lots of money, I know, to Congress? What are they, when are we going to feel the, the relief from the tax breaks, from the gas prices? Yeah, that's one of the first things I looked at when I went to Washington because I heard everybody talk about all these oil subsidies and things. And so I asked my staff to research and give me some information on what exactly are all the oil subsidies. And it's very interesting. There's, there's all kinds of different categories there. Uh, a few of them are directly related to them specifically, such as a tax credit if, if they drill in a hard-to-drill new area, uh, then they're given a tax credit for that. But a lot of the tax credits, or what people call subsidies, aren't specific for them. They're available to all manufacturing in America, such as depreciating new equipment and things. So there's a little bit of a distortion when people talk about all of these oil subsidies, when really there's only a few specifics. But I tell you, uh, we are, I, I'm willing to look at that and, and do away with some of those if it makes sense. As far as you know, taxing them, I, I've thought about that, and what I think is just, I'm trying to think, how are we going to reduce the price of the pump? So I'm just thinking, if we tax the oil companies more, is that going to reduce the price of the pump? I don't really think so. So I'm not sure that's the right, I'm not sure that's the right solution. So if you can hold your hand up, I'll call on you. Maybe. <laughs> You're a stay out friendly here. Okay, who's next? Here we go. You're, you're, okay. so oh, you're, you're, you're talking okay. about the Bakken. Uh, are you aware of the fact that when they get a lot of oil that they're hauled by rail to Oklahoma, that they shut the trains down because it starts getting to be $15, $16 a barrel less when they have a glut in Oklahoma because they'd rather sell it on the coast? No. Got to check into it. Okay. The trains stop. I know I have several friends that work for the railroad. They just stop. Very interesting. Well, I certainly don't uh, uh, claim to be an expert. You so. they'll just stop. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes, I have a question. <clears throat> I'm on Social Security and Medicare, and I'm a Navy veteran. And your support for Paul Ryan's budget yeah. is in conflict, it seems to me, with your desire to control spending. It, 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 it does control my spending because it can double the cost of my Medicare. It gives tax breaks to the wealthiest people in the country, which I can't imagine that they need. And in fact, he gave, in this budget, more money to the Pentagon than they requested. When, they were, when he was asked about it, he said that he didn't believe the generals were telling the truth. And I wonder if anybody's ever seen a time where a general or an admiral ever asked for any less than he really wanted. Never. Well, you've got a lot in there. Boy, you just you. unloaded there. Yeah. I feel better, I'm sure. But uh, first, let's start with Social Security. And the uh, Paul Ryan plan mainly is asking the Social Security trustees to come up with a plan in, in that regard. It, it's very easy to fix, um, and it should be, should be addressed because it's a very, very vital program for seniors. Many people depend on it. Um, as far as the other categories that you, you talked about, I would like to hear from the President or from the Democrats their plan to get us to a balanced budget and to save our country. So far, all we've heard is demonization of our attempt to lead this country and to get us to a balanced budget, but yet you haven't put forth with a solution of your own. So when you all come up with a solution for how to save, protect, and preserve Medicare, I'm more than happy to listen to it as well as to how to balance the budget because I want to make sure that our country is safe for our children and grandchildren. Uh, 